First of all, I think progress, the term and what it really is, especially in terms of technology and economy, was ever the most fatal invention of mankind. Progress. I think it's the most fatal invention man ever has had. Especially when it reached a state of blind faith in progress, like today. Uh, so my question is, could you possibly substitute the term project, uh, 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 progress. Uh, uh, progress for something else? I mean, this... I mean, I think that, that my, my approach is a political one and not a philosophical one. And I think that, um, that insofar I'm dealing with our current political situation and I see that um, I can imagine a state, I personally can imagine a state where people say, and I think this is also a very interesting development which is happening and was, which which is very related to what I've been saying, but it's basically the other side of the coin, which is the outside of the market coin, where people are saying, okay, um, I have a certain level of my basic needs, I have a certain level of my other needs, I don't, um, I can, I can easily live with the fact that I don't, I have a quite low income and I can use this time which I spare on trying to have an income which I can then change for some interesting things and use this time for other things. Um, but um, this is a process I'm very much um, sympathetic towards and I think that's that kind of relates to what you're saying in a way. I mean these people are kind of, I mean people who pursue these cultural values they are basically stepping out of this logic and they're stepping into the logic of, okay, um, maybe a kind of equilibrium state or meditation or, um, yeah, a kind of um, contemplation of a certain, um, or a kind of indulging into the qualities of life, of the, of the moment, which maybe also leads back to Jens and the idea of the walk, of just enjoying a walk and that being a quality. Um, so I think this process is also happening, um, but I think the two could never, so the two processes inside and outside the market, they could never, I mean, I think that, that there will always have to be the question of, if we don't want to go back to a kind of economy of subsistency, there always has to be the question of what does the market actually produce, you know? and and what are interesting things to produce and what are less interesting things to produce but then i think to phrase it another way i think your question is also the question of how big is the market i mean how much time does it or how much space does it take in our lives no does it if if it can if the parts of the market can um produce all what is necessary for our basic needs maybe but i think this this is a very difficult thing to say. Maybe um, also a smaller market could take care of these needs and we can uh, fulfill other needs or other interests we have through other fields which are not market induced. You know? We tried it in the 70s. The hippies tried to be self supportive and some did. Uh, yeah, some. That, that. In a small number, actually, in a small number after all. But some did, and it is possible if you have the space. And, you know, if you have the space available, and maybe the fields available, it is possible. Um, um, I believe you cannot turn anything back. No way. And that's exactly what I'm saying. That's why it's not an interesting. This thing of subsistency is not really an interesting option for me. Because, exactly because of the experiences your generation has made, you know, that one sees, okay, in, in some kind of conception outside um, can be interesting for, for a certain number of individuals, but it's for sure not the main current of where things are going and where people want things to go. And so the question is, so what, that's why I, mean, I maybe started with the inside market branch of, of this line of thinking, not with the outside market, because I think that's the much more crucial and also conceptually difficult to answer question. But also the most inhabitants, uh, um, the most world inhabitants today are doing exactly what you are proposing. They have no choice. You, you believe they are stepping out of the market? No, no, they are, are not in the market. They are, are not in the market. They I'm have really no luxury. 
they are not decadent. They, are, they are work in the field, they work from the hand in the mouth, and if they have a little to share, they share with their neighbor, with most people in this world. Yeah, but that's why this question, I think, is so important, because, first of all, some of the reasons why they cannot, um, some of the reasons why, why they are in this state is due to colonization and to the way we have managed our progress. So I think that we, as being here now and kind of being born late, we have a responsibility to think, um, okay, how can we continue our process, with, because we can turn things back in a way which is sustainable, which doesn't affect other people. And then we have a second problem, is that these people, um, which you are talking about, are on the other hand very much focused on our model. Yeah. Um, and we cannot colonialize them a second time and say, hey, we've been there, don't go there. Yeah. It happened. It happened. Yeah. It happened, it happened every day. Yeah. It happened with plutocratic uh, globalization. It is a second degree col uh, colonialization. Plutocratic globalization. Yeah, but I'm just saying that I don't think. I mean, I don't think that this is an option that people I'm sorry. do. I don't think. I don't think it's a good thing to do that people do it. I'm I don't aware. Think so either. Yeah. And so the question is, what? Apart from saying it's not a good thing to do. What other models of our, how our society, which is now the kind of um, model society which other societies are following, I mean, there could easily be a kind of uh, a movement in, let's say, so-called third world countries which say, mm, fuck this whole process, um, of the Western kind of idea of progress, we're, we're going to stay for our, you know, tropical zone, it's much better to stay, we don't need this here, we're going to stay with our thing and we're going to be much happier and it's much more effective for our needs. But unfortunately, um, people don't have this idea. No? So somehow they've been contaminated by our way of thinking, which Kula said is, uh, it was a very fatal one, uh, which, which I can maybe intuitively uh, agree to, but on the other hand, I agree to the second thing he says, which intuitively, is... Intuitively, I'm victimized by it. <laughs> intuitively. No, no, but I, I mean... What a luxury. No, 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 I'm just saying, I agree to what you're saying, I say, I use the word intuitively because I don't want to, um, I don't feel that I have the knowledge to say if I agree or not, um, but intuitively I do agree, but I also agree with the second thing that I do agree with, that we cannot turn things back. No. Um, so the question is, how can we solve these problems while moving forward? No? Is there somebody in the audience who wants to react to Tino or anybody else? I'm not on that way, I'm doing it. I just have a question, yeah, I just have a question about, this, um, about this issue of stepping out of the market that you are talking about. Um, well, I was more talking about what one can do in the market, no? Yeah, no, well, I have a question, okay. Uh, I have a question about that, the fact that you are um, talking about the we situation. The what? The, the we situation, you know, we, the, the, decadent, the decadent position from which uh, I didn't a person... Use the word decadent. I use the word decadent. <laughs> and I'm using it as well. Yeah. So, but if I may ask the question. Um, my question is, um, the problem with the, with, from my view, the problem with the market is that uh, not that everybody's in the market and trying to step out, but that no, a lot of people, even in Europe, are trying to step into the market. You know, and the market is keeping them, making them find a way to get in. So a lot of the life is a struggle to get into it, you know, still. And not it, and even outside the issue of colonization. So for me, a question is, I'm just, I find it very interesting what you're proposing, but uh, I don't understand what is, uh, what framework you are proposing it within exactly. You know, who are, yeah. So first of all, I think that one, one, one fatal thing, since Ula started to talk about fatal things, I, I think fatal things is, is the word market, because we have to, I mean, I use it as well, I, I take it as a kind of the least worst option, but the worst is capitalism, no? because it's kind of objectifying notion, and that is difficult because the market essentially is nothing which exists, but it's a relation between people, it's a relation between you and me. No? If, and... Um, <clears throat> It's not a thing in the strongest sense of the word. And um, I would say that nobody is interested in stepping out of the market. Nobody. Except very, very few people who are really going onto a farm. And this can be said very precisely. You're going onto a farm and 
you know, creating all the things. That, nobody's interested in stepping out of the market. And I don't think that, um, I mean, I'm talking in a structural way. It's not about the level of how much you're in, in a market. If you go to a third world country, you see people standing around in the corner selling tissues. You know, they, they are structurally as much in the market as Bill Gates, structurally. And the level of degree is, of course, very difficult. They're different. They are asking themselves, <coughs> how can I be in the market to a quantitatively higher degree? Yeah? Um, but I think that um, it's very dangerous, obviously, this idea of stepping out of the market to even mention. That's why I try not to mention, but it comes very quickly because it's a, it's a very small minority of people who actually really logically think about that. Nobody of us who's sitting here um, thinks thinks about this. I would make a bet. Yeah? Why do you think? I'm so? not. I'm not sure about it. Maybe, yeah. maybe yeah. you know. Maybe if you can't step out of the market, maybe the exactly the idea of degree of being involved is decisive. Yeah. No, but stepping out means stepping out. People want to maybe be less involved and you know exchange less. But I think that. Um, I think uh, I think uh, one should be. Yeah. One should be more careful with the world market because there are several kind of markets. So you have to, to say it's a capitalist market or it's a different kind of market. As you say, there are relations and all these uh, type of relations create different kind of space with different quality. What is a non-capitalist market? A, a socialist market, for example. Oh, yeah, capitalism is all. Yeah. <coughs> no. yeah, but it's we are, a market. We are going uh, no. with, with 200 miles towards plutocracy. No, I don't. Over. I mean, I don't think that. Um, I don't. I mean, maybe your knowledge is much higher than mine, but I think there are markets, and there are markets. Yeah, but and this is not, what I'm talking about. And, are, and markets. On, on what kind of, uh, which kind of market you are talking about? No, I don't agree with you. I think that that they vary in degree, but ontologically there's not, there's not. I mean, they vary in degree, and the degree they vary in is in which kind of legal framework are they set in? Because markets, most markets, or certain markets can only like the markets we have in our countries. They can only work because we, our nation state gives them a certain legal frame. Um, but I don't think that what you are trying to say that there are ontologically different categories of markets, like there's a socialist market. What is so, what, what was the market in socialism is just as much a market as in in but any uh, other yeah. uh, system. But and what was um, important about socialism is that there were lots of things which were dealt with not through a market, but that was essentially not a market, and not another form of market. But I mean, this is a kind of, um, this is not no longer what we are doing now, a political discussion, but a kind of... Yeah, um, but as long as you use the term of market, then we, we are restricted uh, in thinking to, to the market. And each of us maybe has a different understanding of uh, what market means. Well, so, I mean it in uh, a very general sense the kind of the exchanging of goods. You're taking my idealism on the question, <laughs> idealism <laughs> about culture and work. And uh, you talk about uh, cultural workers also not being able or capable or willing to get out of, the, uh, of their own specialization and that's why the participation in the market goes on. But it's it's I don't I, think, I think that you have to different I mean all these notions are very clattered and clouded and kind of ideologically um, filled but but they are essentially they are very simple notions and what people mostly mean when they speak about capitalism or the market is they mean corporate culture they don't mean the market I mean the, the moment you go you are in the market because you're a director of this place you get a monthly income I hope and you go to the shop you are, you are in the market and the question is if you participate in corporate culture this is a completely other question I don't think you do I hope at least maybe when you go to your fundraising dinner that's as close as you get but um, it's you don't necessarily participate in corporate culture I think you are you're participating in a very different kind of culture and that is a um, from my political perspective, a very good thing. You know? I hope that I am too. Um, I'm not one single inch interested in corporate culture, but I'm neither interested in saying corporate culture um, is the market because it would simply be nonsense. It's just a certain kind of culture 
which certain people and a lot of people in our society adhere to, but those are just their that's just those are just cultural values. These are essentially cultural questions and not economic questions. Jens and Tina are preparing the exhibition at ICA soon. How do you argue with uh, with Tina about these issues? Well, the exhibition is actually called this progress and um, <laughs> tries to address oh exactly this you issue. Ask the <laughs> I just thought it was curious that um, Ulla wanted to wanted us to go back to this in caves or no or no 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 no, no, no. <laughs> progress or the concept of progress was the ever most fatal by man fatal invented concept at all. But progress, the most fatal concept ever invented. Yeah, but uh, um, the, every day we make a progress. Every day it's an well, experience. No, it's, a, it's a concept which. He, he refers to technology and economics. And I, I, think I repeat one more time, the notion of progress, the concept of progress, is the most fatal um, ever invented by man. And it's Colonialism in, belongs to that same concept. No, and it's at the museum, and that's why it's important also for us, I think, for us to think about it, because the museum essentially is a place where this notion has been developed. No? The kind of the narrative of time when you go through museum collection, and I would argue even in a contemporary art space it's the same. The contemporary art space takes its legitimation out of the fact that today, 2006, we are doing this here, and yesterday, or 10 years ago, this and that was happening. And while you are coming here, you're always thinking, what is today? Yeah? And so, you're, so even the contemporary art space, although it does physically doesn't enact this in such a literal sense anymore, that you go from one century to the other, um, it still has this thing. And, and the other thing that I'm personally interested in, and also makes maybe a line between uh, the three of us, which is maybe not so visual, uh, not so apparent, is the walk. No? It's the walking through the museum, which is a kind of ritualized kind of walking through time, progressing, literally progressing um, through time. Um, <coughs> And, and museum and visual art have very much to do with the kind of this linearization of time and this, and this also kind of Foucault would say governmental techniques of bringing this into body, this notion of project progress mm -hmm. which you think is fatal, bringing this notion into, into the bodies of people. I mean relating it back... But yeah. Progress has, has proven that it is fatal. The only thing what I find interesting about the, the notion or the term progress if it is treated in present tense. And if you deal with that same notion or concept of progress ex exclusively now, here and now and in present tense, because then you take the whole corruptiveness out of it. Progress is per definition corrupt. If you, if you deal with it, I don't know, it's possible. If you deal with progress, with the notion of progress, exclusively with the consciousness mm. and the awareness and the alertness in present time, then it may be interesting. Otherwise, I don't think it is interesting. Mm. That's what the Otherwise, show is you may this put a question this behind it. Uh, this progress. That's why it's called, the piece is called, the piece I'm going to show is a new work, it's called This Progress. That's the present time. Yeah. Without questions. Do you have a scientist, a scientist in residence? They have a program where there is a scientist in residence, but it's nothing I'm involved with it at all. <laughs> it's funded by the Wellcome Trust, <laughs> and it's in collaboration with our institution. It's more that I think that the, the idea of uh, sci science and scientific questions could be brought in. Uh, um, we published uh, a year ago, uh, we published a book, uh, Now What Artists Write, and I was interested uh, to go deeply in thoughts of um, a tea note, or maybe introductory thoughts to this uh, to this idea. Um, it's quite interesting, uh, interesting reading. I wanted to revisit a few questions from the World Question Center, unless somebody has an urgent uh, question to pose now, because there are still drinks waiting uh, to welcome the new year <laughs> upstairs. Let's re revisit one, and that goes back to. My idealism about what do, what is it that we do in art uh, that I believe that we are counterbalancing this kind of development in the world, um, and it's a question that Marina Abramovic posed. Basically, my main question is really about the kind of situation that the world is in right now, and what could be the function of art to change that. 
Um, there was a couple of times at the, at the table I heard there was a di division line between the world and the art world. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know what you mean by So go for it. It is really a mental thing. It is mental. It is like Marina still believes in the artist as a special human being. You don't. Well, I, I answer that later. <laughs> um, Marina thinks that uh, a, a person, especially an artist, who has maybe more the, 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 the you know, the backgrounds, the resources, or the space, either uh, intellectual or, or uh, spiritual, especially spiritual. And Marina is very much also spiritual. She thinks that an artist should demand of himself, of herself, to develop as a human being, as a person, to a degree that the person itself, without putting out any product, can change the surrounding, has a positive influence to the surrounding. That's what we try to do with Nazi Crossing, sitting there for hours and hours, fasting, silent, motionless in the museum, try to have a strong influence on the surrounding, which worked. This more mentalist kind of a, um, relating to. I think that. I mean, I think that, that on a personal plan, I have no idea, and I guess it's probably true, but if I take the question away from its author, I think it's a, it's a very simple question with a very simple answer. And, mm -hmm. um, and I think that, 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 I mean, I think that in a society today, I mean, the, the market or economy is 100% the same as culture. There's no difference except the basic needs, the, our biological needs. All the rest, what is produced and what is demanded is only due to our cultural values. Yeah, but the, culture is part of the economy. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. There is no difference between culture and economy. Not no. even one little millimeter. There's no difference. So anything we do here in such an institution where we discuss, we, we come together on a Sunday afternoon as part of this society and we're like 30 people and we're discussing, we're essentially we're asking ourselves what are our cultural values and what should our cultural values be? And after these cultural values, we will make our decisions. Yeah? And these decisions, they will create the world. So I think that, that um, and maybe, I mean, what is the question? What can art do? I think, I mean, art can do basically everything. I mean, it's a very powerful tool. And not only in the, in the kind of I don't I personally don't see it in in such a spiritual sense, but in just in the question of which, which it's it's a it's a work art is a work on, on values and these values inform what what we do, you know? and that's that's quite clear connection. I'm quite straightforward. I'm quite astonished sometimes at the level of schizophrenia which there is between kind of here here's culture and there's the world. I mean. It's not really schizophrenia. I would call it schizoid. Schizophrenia would be pathological. Schizoid. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> However, I, I completely buy in this. Um, from now on, I would say schizoid. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice word, it's schizoid. <laughs> <coughs> However, Tino managed to, to restore my confidence in art. <laughs> in the beginning of 2006, <coughs> we stayed at a bug, we can do anything we decide to do. With that, I would like to thank everybody. Our guests, you in the audience, and invite you a floor up for a drink, and hopefully we can continue in less formal setting. Thank you very much for coming.